Welcome to the Not So Kind Regards podcast. I'm Maddie Birdcage. And I'm Caroline Moss. We are done with the digital fluff and pleasantries. And we're here to talk straight about brand building, digital marketing, and personal growth. The last financial year was the biggest in Birdcage's history, all thanks to our unique proven marketing formula, Birdcage Marketing School and through the agency. To celebrate and to give you the feeling that we are now experiencing, we are taking a full $1,000 off when you enroll in the full library by June 30 and pay in full. Use code EOFY 2024 at checkout. This episode is of course brought to you by Birdcage Marketing the forward-thinking business growth and digital marketing brand that started this all. If you are a small, medium or large-sized business, don't know how to get started or need to tighten up your digital marketing efforts, we are currently taking on new strategy and virtual marketing manager clients. Let us shape your strategy, give you the action steps you need to implement and then hold your hand as you and or your team implement the exact process that will take you from where you are now to where you want to be. To get started, book your discovery call at birdcagemarketing.com.au and let's do this. Now, back to the episode. Hey, Maddie. Hey, Caroline. Excited to have another episode of the Not So Kind Regards podcast. And today it's you and me, baby. Just us. Uh, Today we're going to talk about how to think your way out of a sales slump because I know this is something that's coming up in a lot of business owners I talk to, both who work with us and don't. So I'm excited to get your take on this. For sure. And, you know, everything, I believe success is in the mind. And so people think that what you have to do to get out of a sales slump is actually to do more things. But you have to do the right things and you can only figure out what the right things are if you're in the right mindset. So Mm. I'm excited for this. 100%. So I guess like just speaking to the state of the economy in the world right now, like we work with clients all over the world and a lot of them come to us because they need a problem solved. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times things slow down, whether it's seasonal slowdowns or the economy or they're trying to grow to a new stage and they just don't think their current sales are matching the effort that they're putting in. So I guess what would you say to someone who's kind of in that like frantic, like, oh my gosh, things are not going the way I expected like, is this a normal part of business? And yeah, what would you say to them? What, what's the first piece of advice you'd give them? The first thing I'd say is that I know how you feel. I've been there. And if I let myself, I will continue to dip in and out of there because what, what you don't realize, obviously there's, there's times when you are in financial dire straits and the, this business has been in that before where you're literally negative money. But then you can find yourself back in that state if you're not careful, because you get used to a new normal. So we get used to, for example, having exceptional profit months. And then as soon as that doesn't happen for us, it could be easy for me to go, what's changed? What's happening? What, what is this a sign of? And that's this whole assigning meaning to things that aren't there. Oh, it's just a slower sales month that month because of X, Y, Z. Now I am very cautious to buy into these stories around excuses around why sales are slowing down, but I am also realistic. So you'll see some business coaches online saying things like, just because it's December and you're a B2B, that should be no excuse. You you should be selling more than ever, right? And then that kind of makes you feel like, well, I'm not selling more than ever because people aren't thinking about investing in their business right now. They're thinking of Christmas gifts for their children. And then that might make you feel a bit crap. But on the flip side, I also, I don't want you to go into a season expecting it to be bad either. So it's like for us, for example, December is always our smallest billing month because we are not at work the whole time because we go on holidays. But every single year I go into it saying it doesn't have to be that way. And you can take control of that and you can turn things around and tell the story that you want. So what I'm taking out of that is you're saying it's reality versus like mindset sometimes. Yeah. (laughs) And like sometimes you got to be a little Delulu when you're a business owner so that you can have the right mindset to be able to create a problem solve, to be able to like hype your team up, to make sure that like morale is good and to like have the right vibes to bring in those high money months. So sales is like weight loss (laughs) where 
whatever you're doing, you won't see the results generally until three months later, Mm. I will say. And so what you're experiencing now is a result of what you were doing one to three months ago. And so that's why I think it's really easy to get so worked up about it because you might realize, oh shit, I need to make some more sales. You go and do all the things and then you're like, but why haven't I still made a sale? And it's like, well, depending on your customer journey, Mm. depending on your funnel, depending on your lead time, you won't see the results of what you're doing until a few days, weeks, months later. Mm. And you had to give some like tough love to a recent um, office hours birdcage marketing school student because like she's a marketer. We work with a lot of marketers in the school as well as business owners. And just like a lot of marketers, we're so good at prioritizing our client work. We do it in the agency too. We're like, we're too busy to do our own marketing. And then we really feel that months later and we're like, oh, that was a mistake. Yeah. You have to make time for your own marketing. Like you will not, you're either going out and finding customers or they're coming to you. But either way, like there's a trade-off and you need customers coming in to make a business run. Yeah. And it's a constant, it's, it's constant work. Mm. It's a forever job. Sorry to say marketing and sales is a forever job. If you plan on growing, if you want to grow, or even if you want to maintain, depending on what your business model is. hundred percent. And like, there are so many automations you can make, but there's still work and being creative that you have to do to support that audit, those automations. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's not a forever job. Like there are arguments for people that set up businesses and then nail the messaging and run the automations. But my thing is like the world is not static and therefore your business cannot be static. And it's the businesses that are not evolving. Even if you're doing well now, the businesses that aren't evolving are the ones that will eventually die. If you're not evolving, you will die. You have to meet market demand. When I was going through our really tough financial year in 2022, I was already doing mindset work, but I was doing a lot of emotional bypassing, I figured out, because I actually went back and looked at some old journals of that time, kind of wanting to dive in and have a look and see, like, how bad was it? And my journal entries were all just, like, positive thinking. Toxic positivity. Toxic positivity, emotional bypassing, not actually acknowledging the fact that, holy shit, my business is going under. Mm. So number one, the first thing I'd say is stop with the toxic positivity, stop with the emotional bypassing, feel your feelings, feel the fact that things are not where you want them to be. And don't assign meaning to that. Don't let it mean I'm a failure, I'm never going to get sales this is over, I can't do this, no one wants to buy from me. Don't give in to those stories, but just give yourself space to acknowledge and feel the fact that, shit, this is not working the way I want it to work and I feel sad about it or I feel frustrated about it or it's making me not want to go to work today Mm -hmm. and just give yourself that space. But then have that pity party, but then the party has to end. And when the party ends, what you need to do is you don't need to figure out how you can sell more. I want you to figure out how can you help more. Mm. That's the shift. It's a minor shift and it may sound like just words, but I want to actually explore strategies on how to actually do that. Mm. And so to me as a marketer, that already speaks to me going like, okay, that trickles down into my content to like the value I bring that's both free and paid. That's, Mm. you know, whether you have a product business or not, it's like you're in the business of solving problems. You're in the business of selling stuff because that's how you make your business profitable. But in order to bring people in, you have to solve problems. You do because, hey, as much like I am, I used to be such an anti-people person. Like I'm the first one to admit that I had my close network, but I used to be such an anti, like, oh, whatever, people look after themselves. But in order to be successful and actually in order for your life to have any sort of meaning, you need to be helping other people. Like that, that is the whole point. That's the purpose of life. I feel Mm. that's how you create success for yourself, whatever that looks like. It needs to be about helping other people. You are not owed anything. You are not owed sales. Yeah. But you can have limitless sales and you can be limitlessly successful if you are generous in helping others and know your worth. 
And I think it's times like these in your business that are testing you and like leveling you up to be the business owner that you're trying to be. The analogy is if you've asked for a better view, don't be surprised if there's a mountain put in front of you to climb. You have to climb the mountain to get the better view. That's why it's there. We had a slowdown in our own sales in recent times. And as much as at the time it's like, oh, that's annoying. I why couldn't the good times just keep on rolling? But I'm actually being quite grateful for it because it's pushed me to get very minute with what I know works and what does not work. So we we basically we had this huge change up. And then as a result, things stop working like they used to. And then I've slowly been introducing, it's like an elimination diet, mm. really. Mm -hmm. It's like I've slowly been reintroducing things back into our marketing that we had removed to then see what's ultimately going to flick that switch. And I feel like we have started to see the floodgates open a lot more, but I feel like we are on the precipice on these floodgates opening wide and I will know exactly what it is, what what button I had to push in order to do that. And then forever forward, I will know that that is the button, that is the money-making button. Mm. But I have to say that in order for me to get to this point, this is a new level for me because in previous times I would have been spiralling or <laughs> as someone said, let's reframe it as twirling. <laughs> but previously I would have been spiralling. I would have been taking and I, and I actually did default to some of those actions and my team called me out on it as well, but I was like knee-jerk reactions, you know, how can we quickly sell this? How can we do this? How can, Like all these Band-Aid fixes and it's like, you know, self-awareness, it's shown me that I'm like these. this is old patterning behaviour that I'm doing and instead I need to think like how would higher self Maddie, how would next level Maddie address this and do that instead? I love that you said that. It's like it's so easy to just get caught up in the in the good times and we know everything and then – the universe is like, hey, we, we want you to learn something mm. because we've well, got this other awesome thing coming your way. Well, it's like we hit our goals pretty much, you know, I hit the goals day one of this year. Like the first month that we had this year, I'm like, well, that's the goals reached that we were working towards. And it's like, okay, so I set some new goals. And it's like in order to get to those new goals, you have to learn new things. Mm-hmm. And so I, I'm wondering to myself, if I would have just been satisfied at the level that we were at and to maintain that, maybe it would have just kept on rolling, but I've asked for more. Yeah. And so I, I need to learn more. We need to learn more as a team. Yeah. You set some really high goals and it's, I'm the cynic of the group, <laughs> but, um, but that's good to have me on the team too, because then I'm like, yeah. poke holes at things and say, okay, how do we fill this gap? And how do we, how exactly. do we get there? Yeah. But, um, I would love for us to then dive into the actual like tactics and strategies you need when the sales start to slow down. So starting to talk about, you know, my point of view is you've got two ways to look at your business. You can go, okay, I need to focus on new eyeballs and new customers, or I need to focus on making more money out of my past customers. Yeah. And this is what I always talk to my clients about too. It's like, do you have past customers that you can, you know, upsell products to or do special offers to, to get them to book with you again? And some of them go, no, I don't want to touch those. And some of them, yeah, that's a great tool to to start making more money and creating like VIPs and loyalty because as we know, it costs you a lot, lot more to bring new customers through the door than it does to keep an old customer. Yeah. I always struggle with that because I was never 100%, and this is me being vulnerable, up until probably halfway through last year, I was never 100% confident that we were delivering the best service we possibly could to our existing clients. We probably were, like we probably were. I just didn't believe that because there was self-worth issues at play there. And again, this comes back to mindset. This is, this is what I mean. So if let's just say 18 months ago, you were coaching me and you asked me that question, I would have said, there's no way I could upsell existing clients. Like no way, because I thought that they all hated me. <laughs> and so it's like, you were afraid to like open that door, yeah. of, like peel back those curtains even because yeah. of you just had this story in your head yeah. that they weren't happy. They weren't happy. And, and you I'm didn't like, want to hear it. No, I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear the feedback. I didn't. But the reality is like, I don't actually know if they were happy or not. Like we still have clients from that time. So I'm sure at least a portion of them were happy, right? But it's like now, if you ask me that question, I'm like, 
oh yeah, let's get in and let, like I said that the only the other day, I'm like, oh, go and speak to this client over here. I'm pretty sure they want more from us. Mm-hmm. You can't go in with that attitude if you don't believe that. And so you need to get that self-worth about you and what you're doing in order to even address that. Definitely. And now we have clients, like I was thinking about this the other day, like before I went on maternity leave, we booked some really big clients and I worked with them for about a year and it was like in meta ads and email marketing and these big growth packages. And now we're signing clients who are paying us the same amount of money, but it's like strategies and content creation and content strategies. And it's like, and they just keep coming back for more and it just feels easy. Yeah. And it's like how we picture those other big clients to be because everyone says the big clients are the easy ones, but they there was just not the right vibes and they were just, yeah. it's empowered clients versus people looking to like you to save them. Yes. That is a big difference. And again, that comes down to what's happening in your brain as a business owner, as a marketer, because there are so many different aspects that have rebuilt this business, but one of them is the types of clients that we are attracting now. Mm -hmm. The types of clients we attract now, as you said, they're super empowered. They are intelligent. They believe in their worth and what they're capable of, but they also acknowledge their shortcomings and where they need help. Mm -hmm. But they aren't looking for someone to just throw their problems at and walk away. They're looking for someone to work with in order to get the solutions. And so the marketing that I was doing previously where I was in like bad mindset, like looking for a Band-Aid fix, it was attracting similar people Mm. who were in a bad mindset looking for a Band-Aid fix. Whereas when I leveled up my own energy, my own self-worth, my own mindset, I'm now attracting people like me and I'd be a dream to work with (laughs) because I take responsibility for what's going on in my business. Even if I'm getting help with something, I still... It comes, but I see myself as ultimately it all stops with me. Like I'm the one that either allows or fix or doesn't allow something to happen. So what I'm hearing you say is that really like sales very much and your clients and your customers very much like mirror what you have going on on like a subconscious level. 100%. Someone once said that you attract the type of buyer that you are. Mm. And so that made me want to become not a, I used to always be about like the DIY option. How can I get this cheaper? Or it's, you know, I'll just, I'll do the quick fix way. Race to the bottom. Yeah. And so that's the type of buyer that I was. Now I'm not at all. Now I'm like a, I don't really care how much it costs as long as this value is coming out of it. Even with this podcast setup, we were just talking about how we're having some dramas with our mic's giving up on us halfway through recording sometimes and we're potentially looking at getting a sound engineer to fly down to Mackay and set this all up for us. Like I don't know what that what that is going to cost and you ask me, are we going to do that? And it's like, well, if the value is there, then yes. If it's going to save us time, it's going to help us like not – have the mental struggle yeah. and worry of, is it recording? Is it not? Did we lose that really smart you know thing what? we just said? I almost feel like this setup is like the old version of mm. how we used to do things, which is very DIY. I'll just handle everything. I'll do everything. I don't need to pay money to someone else to help me. But I will say that rather than waiting till you can afford a mic engineer, we're on season three of this podcast and you took the messy action first and you DIY'd where you needed to, to understand this has made you understand the value of bringing in an expert. Yeah, that is true. Well, first I wanted to quote James Clear. Uh, I get his weekly email, it might be daily, but he said um, three ways to learn something new. So I just wanted to quote them real quick because it might spark an interesting conversation. So first thing you do, reflect on what you've already tried. So that's a great way to go like, okay, what's gotten me here? What's worked in the past? What isn't working? And we talk about that testing all the time. So I know it's boring, but you got to look at your analytics. You got to track things. You should be like weekly or monthly looking at all of the efforts you're doing. Number two, attempt something that you have not tried. So whether this is learning something, using an expert, like getting really good advice, something like that, trying a different platform, trying a new messaging on your content. And then number three is read about what someone else has tried or listen or watch, because I think that's really valuable too. Yeah. 
I think they are all really great steps. One thing I have to say, and I keep bringing it back to 2022, which is when I was in my cocoon, I'm just going to say. I was in my cocoon and then we've emerged the butterfly. But when I was in 2022, I read more than I've ever read and uh, consumed and did all of the things more than I've ever taken advice on ever before. And I had all these coaching containers and all this stuff. This year, I actually consciously am trying not to consume. You know, in the past, I used to try and fit in listening to podcasts between dropping the kids off and coming to work, which is like a seven minute drive. And it's like now I purposely don't play anything. I don't do anything. Sometimes I do if I feel like it, but it's like sometimes I think you can consume too much. Mm -hmm. And so if you're currently, I'm really speaking to the person right now who's not necessarily just in a sales slump, but is in a sales slump and actually is kind of staying there, like in a rut, a sales rut. And you feel like you're doing all the things, you're being positive, you're being busy, you're learning, you're posting content, you're doing all of the things to make you feel like you should be getting results and yet the results still aren't coming because that is a really lonely place to be because it's like that's when the stories do start to emerge because you're like I've tried everything and I still can't make it work. Maybe I am a failure, Mm -hmm. you know. And what I would really say to that, like if I could go back and give myself the advice of how to get out of that period, it is the question is not what do I need to do to make more sales? It's who do I need to become Mm. to make these sales? Yes. Because that is what people are really buying from you. Mm -hmm. They're buying at the risk of sounding too spiritual and woo-woo. They are buying your energy. Yep. And money is an energetic exchange. Don't look at it as I'm taking money from my customers. It's that money is flowing through my customers to me because I am the type of person who attracts endless money and success because of what I then flow through to my customers. And what I tell you, what I believe is that I feel like everybody already has the answers within them, Mm. but sometimes you just need other people to pull that out of you. And so I think that's where like our strategy comes in because it's less about us telling you what your audience should look like, who your audience is, what kind of messages. Because I I sometimes get mentoring clients like that who are like, just tell me the answer. And I'm like, I don't have the answer. I can tell you how to get to the answer, but you actually have the answer. Yeah, You're the one who's been marketing to your customers. You're the one who's been making sales. You can send out surveys. You can ask questions on your stories. You can dive into what really makes them tick. And I'm going to give you the framework to get you there. That's, That's right. It's like people ask, how can you write a strategy about a business you've never worked with? Well, it's because we're the experts in asking the right questions. You're the experts in what you do. And even people that haven't yet launched their business, I want to say what lights you up the most? You know, what makes you really excited? Like what what have you figured out? It's often it's marketing to our old selves, Mm. solving a problem for who we used to be because we've solved that problem. What was that like one moment when you were in the sales slump Was there like a moment, like a light bulb moment or something, or what did it come later when you have that like 2020 vision about what you, or was it just starting to share your story? I know it was like TikTok, Mm. specifically your content on there that started helping bring in the right customers. Yeah. I'm just wondering if there was like a switch in messaging or services you offered. I guess it was kind of after it all happened, but also still at the beginning where I read the book, how to get rich or something. And I hate the title of it, but it's written by the guy, this British entrepreneur. He's like an old hippie now who owned, he started Maxim magazine and he literally is a billionaire. And he had this book basically about how to run business. And the whole message was based like his whole message was, this is probably not how you're supposed to do it, but this is how I've done it. And every single teaching in that book is literally what I always felt to be the correct way to do things about the whole, like just some examples, the whole ownership thing. So many clients of ours, as they grow, they get approached by investors and they think that's the next logical step to take the investment, right? I've always felt that's a dumb idea. If you don't need the money or if you can raise the money personally, why would you possibly have someone else take control of your company? Mm. And his biggest thing is ownership always, 100% ownership at all costs. 
And so it's, it was just little things like that that really validated the internal voice that was in my head. And this speaks to what you just said, Caroline, about we already have the answers. Mm -hmm. It's just I didn't trust myself enough. And it was when I read this book written by a billionaire and we think the same way that I'm like, well, fuck, <laughs> I'd be a billionaire by now. Like he just validated everything yeah. I've been thinking, but I yeah. just need an external source to go like, hey, you're on the right track. Yeah. Yes. So just like some tactical things, because that's my kind of wheelhouse of what you can do is like 100 percent. None of these tactical things are going to work if you don't have the right mindset. I'll tell you that right now, because you're going to be like using cheap and dirty tactics. You're going to be consuming everything on social media. People tell you to do. You're just going to be like, OK, I'll just try this hook or just this or this that, or I just need to try this thing. And it's that like frantic energy versus like, hey, I got this. Like, I've got the strategy now. I, I know what I'm going to try. So then we start to diagnose and we go, let's look at traffic. Are you growing on social media? Are you getting people to your website, to your offers, wherever you're offering them? If you're not, that's where you need to start. The next thing is leads. Like are people in that next step? Are they adding to cart? Are they signing up to your email list? Are they like at least going to a few pages on your website? Like the, do they seem interested? If they're not, then there's something wrong with our traffic to website messaging or email messaging. It's like whatever that next step is, those things need to marry up and deliver what you're promising. And then if those two things are ticked off and you're like, that's all swell, but people just aren't buying, then it's like, okay, well, whatever the cost is, you're not showing the value enough for people to want to spend money on that. Or there's no urgency or scarcity yeah. in there to buy. So they want to buy it, but they're like, oh, I'll take my time. Yeah. I can buy it later. Yeah. And then they don't because they get distracted. Mm. Yeah. I was just um, listening to a podcast on my flight down here all about like behavioral science and social media marketing. And he gave this example, the person on the podcast gave this example of one, how scarcity is done correctly. And when humans see that there is only so much of something, they place a higher value on it. So they want it. And it's like that FOMO. Versus when it's done incorrectly by accident. So think toilet paper gate of COVID mm. and you could only buy so many rolls or so many packages of rolls per shop that actually worked in reverse because that made it more valuable. So somebody would send their husband in, then they would go in, then another family member and everybody's just buying two sets of pa toilet paper at a time. But that's why it disappeared because it worked in reverse. And that's the way humans operate. I don't get that. Isn't it, that the same thing then? Yeah. Well, to it was great for toilet paper roll company. Oh, right. Yes. But not great for like consumers. Yes. That's because right. there wasn't any left. So, there yeah, wasn't. I guess it worked out for toilet paper companies. Yeah. But it was the grocery stores that were putting that limit on them. Yeah. Oh, we gotcha. 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 Yeah. yeah. So humans like we naturally just want what we can't have or what we think is limited. Mm. And there's no way I get clients sometimes they are like, I don't want to use scarcity. Like, I don't think that's the way I need to sell. But it's like go try your way and then come back to me and go like, oh, you have to use scarcity and you have to use urgency. You have to have a deadline, but it has to be authentic and it has to be real. Yeah. You can't lie and be like, don't lie. And I think that's when, when people say, I don't want to use scarcity urgency. They don't want to lie, which I don't lie because people can read right through it, but it's, you have to, you have to create it. So that's why people, for example, they go from having evergreen courses, for example, where you can buy it all the time to having just enrollment periods mm -hmm. because that naturally creates that scarcity. It's not here all the time. Or they add value to it and that value add has scarcity. Yeah. And then just finally, I want you to think about your messaging when it comes to sales slumps. And that is why you need a strategy, especially mm. an audience and brand strategy and understanding your marketing funnel and customer journey, which we teach all through Birdcage Marketing School in the method. It's like, if you don't have a, if you have a traffic problem, if you have a lead problem, if you have a conversion problem, those all come back to your messaging on each of those stages of the funnel. And so you need to diagnose what is it that people need to hear from me at this stage of the funnel? Am I giving them too much or too little? Am I not hitting the right pain points, the transformations, the desires, where they are? And am I meeting them where they are? Yeah, that's the benefit of having a funnel. It's that you can really map out where are people dropping off. Is your content getting a lot of reach, but nothing else is happening? Well, that tells me that your top of funnel is great, but your middle of funnel is not great. Your middle of funnel is all about trust. Then if your 
getting a lot of like comments and follows and, in, and people messaging you saying, this is, I love this so much. Like, you know, you really speak to me, but then you're not getting the sales. It's like, well, then your bottom of funnel messaging is off or there's something not quite working there. If you're not getting any of this, then you have to start at the top, which is you need to get attention in the first place. Mm -hmm. You need to get the eyeballs. Yeah. So we covered mindset and I think that was really the bulk of how to get yourself out of a slail slump. And I know that sounds like, oh, discom like uncomfortable. I don't want to do that. Or like, oh, that's waste of time, waste of time. I just need to, like the down and dirty tactics. But if you're not showing up the way you need to, you're going to keep pulling in that frantic energy. Yeah. And then you need to go back to your strategy and your sales funnel and the platforms and diagnose what's going on there. For sure. Nice. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye.